Hello, um, I'm Hussam Adin Ahmed from Pakistan. I'm a geotechnical engineer with Jacobs in Dubai. I've been involved with um, um, oil refineries and, and the oil infrastructure network in the Middle East. The Middle East has some of the largest uh, oil reserves uh, or, or also gas reserves, so uh, hydrocarbon fuel reserves in the world. Exploiting these resources and then exporting them around the world is a major source of, of, uh, of income uh, generation for these countries. A lot of the development uh, that we've seen in the Middle East is based on the proceeds of the export of these hydrocarbons. Exploration for oil started in, in, in the early part of the previous century, around the early 1930s. Commercially exploitable uh, volumes of oil were discovered and refineries were set up. Um, one of the earliest uh, refineries was set up in Bahrain in 1932 and uh, subsequent ones in, in Saudi Arabia and in other regions around in 1936, 1938. The production capacity was relatively small in the beginning, but, but for some refineries it has grown to almost 800,000 barrels of oil per day. To, to um, um, uh, exploit this oil and then to transport it, you need a relatively robust system of, of pipelines to transport it across the desert environment and then it has to be exported as well for countries around the world. And the infrastructure for which was built again around the 1940s or, or following the end of the Second World War, um, most of these, uh, these facilities are, are coming to the end of their design lives or the end of the, the capacities that they were designed for. Civil engineers have played a big part in, in, in uh, planning, designing and then uh, constructing the infrastructure for, for, for oil networks in, in the Middle East. I myself, as a geotechnical engineer, I'm involved in uh, refurbishment or renovation projects for these oil infrastructure. We faced some major challenges. Um, um, because of uh, either recent or historical uh, conflicts in the region. There are certain projects or certain uh, uh, boundaries of projects within which there might be the chances of uh, explosive remnants of war, um, um, that's ERW. For that, um, uh, we need to plan uh, geophysical surveys or other non-destructive surveys to, to figure out or pinpoint the location of these uh, explosive uh, material if they are there. Once we have identified the location, you need to come up with um, extraction uh, mechanisms. All of this infrastructure, the oil export, is all an ongoing operation. So as a civil engineer, you are involved in planning for the, the, the scheduling of your tasks, not to hinder the regular operation of these export facilities. And as a civil engineer, you are involved from the very initial phases of conceptualizing the projects and then planning them and then constructing them. And once that's done, you are involved in the operation and maintenance tasks as well. So as a civil engineer, you are involved from the very start till the very end. Beyond the end, you are involved in coming up with new techniques to, to advance the, um, um, the lifelines of these uh, projects. As a civil engineer, I've been involved in projects in, in a number of countries, and this has enabled me to, to, to travel to and experience cultures and places I would otherwise not have had the opportunity for. It has made me appreciate um, um, the, the value that civil engineers give to civilization and how uh, um, um, we are part of helping develop a more sustainable world. Civil engineers um, help create and bring to fruition the very basic necessities of modern life, such as shelter, utilities and transport networks. Um, as a civil engineer, you're, you're involved in the planning, execution and maintenance of this, of this uh, entire infrastructure. You're part of creating a world or, or, pre or creating facilities which will be benefiting humankind even, even after your lifetime. So it's, it's a legacy that you leave to the world. Civil engineers bring the civil to civilization.